Hello all. Uh, so I'm Heiki, uh, co-founder and CEO of Happy Not. And uh, in next 15 minutes, I'm going to tell that how we are using uh, equity to get like motivation levels higher. Uh, but like just before that, uh, like few words about company, like uh, what we are doing. In case you haven't uh, like seen our service before, so we are providing service for roughly four, uh, roughly 5,000 customers, uh, so that they know real time how happy customers are in their locations. So we have like many retail customers, many service customers, uh, roughly 200 airports which are using our service. But like before, uh, before I tell more about like how we are serving the equity uh, and uh, and also like why we are doing that, uh, we have like few rules what we have agreed together with the owners, and uh, let's start with those. So the first one is that uh, like we think that no one is able to do success stories alone. Uh, it's not only like the founder or or like a uh, few founders or few people, uh, it's, it's basically like teamwork. So, uh, so because of this, uh, we think that the success should be also shared with a uh, like bigger, bigger group of people. And that's like a uh, number one rule what we are having. Then, uh, like second thing what we agree together with, uh, together with the other shareholders is that like, uh, we, like, it doesn't make sense uh, for us to work in the, in the board of directors position. Because like we all know that there are people who are who are like uh, who are like focusing on that. They know how to how to create like how, how to support like long-term plans. What kind of things are critical for companies to make like success stories? So for that reason, we agree that let's let's uh, let's make always sure that we have best possible uh, people there. And uh, actually, like last year, we got uh, award here in Finland that we had a uh, best board of directors team uh, in Finland. So no, no employees, uh, no, no one uh, from the like employees are, are part of the board. Then the third thing. So uh, this is also like one, one, one critical that like uh, like we wanna we wanna make sure that like no one, no one as an owner can justify their opinions or decisions. So basically, like it, it means that on the operational level, uh, like owners don't have any special rights. And uh, the reason why we wanted to do this was that like, we want to give the space uh, for the employees so that they, they feel that like, uh, they, have a room, they have room and, and they, they can tell about their ideas, about, uh, about the things uh, what would make company more successful. And the fourth thing, uh, what we agreed, was that during the first years, uh, actually like basically in, uh, in the first two years, uh, we didn't get any salaries, so all, all of the money what we got in we were basically using that money uh, to develop our product further and to, and to make sure that uh, it works for the customer and it's creating the value what we are thinking that it should create. Uh, but after two years, uh, we started to get salaries and, um, and uh, the salaries were like from, at first I think it was like 200 euros, 500 euros, 1000 euros, and uh, we all had same salaries. So, so at, that, at this point, we had roughly 10 people uh, at Happy or Not, and, uh, and almost everyone was shareholder and with, with the low salary. salary. Uh, like having like it, like, it would have feel like weird to discuss with other shareholders that, hey, like, like I'm having like 300 euros salary and you are having like 350 euros salary, getting like 50 euros more. So like uh, we were thinking like that just doesn't make sense. But then about the, about like how we are actually serving the equity. And like uh, I was thinking that it would be like um, it would be maybe may may like interesting to hear some stories about how how like how companies are actually doing that. So when we started the business, uh, we were basically giving shares. So we were thinking that okay, should we give like stock options or what the structure should be? But because like like all of us know, the shares th those are the ones which are kind of like the most valuable thing, and. Uh, and because of that, we agreed that, hey, let's give shares. So the people who came first, they got more. People who, keep, who uh, became later, uh, they got a little bit less. But still, like, we were always giving the shares. And uh, after, roughly, like, after six years, uh, we changed the model. And this is roughly at the same time when we started cooperation with investor called North Zone. Uh, 
So basically, in past two years, we have been we, we have had like sort of an employee stock option plan in place, and what it means is that we are giving stock options. And here you can see the structure, like how how we have built up that. So basically, the stock options are kind of like free for the employees. Of course, those stock options has to have certain like strike price. Like uh, that, that's the way how it how it has to be done uh, because of the taxation. And then we have like like total of four year vesting time. So what does that mean? Is that like if if someone is getting let's say like three stock options, so with a one year cliff, like during the first year, you you are getting like uh, basically like zero stock options. But during the second year, you get one. Third year, one. And then fourth year, you get one stock so stock option. So after th four years, you have like for stock options. And, uh, and after that period, you can also like purchase those shares. And if the person leaves, you lose the right to the stock options. That's the program what we have in place right now. And then uh, about like how we are, how we are like sharing this. So this like kind of like the roughly numbers so that you can, you can like get idea that how, like how we have been doing this. So like uh, roughly like equal part with the founders, with the VC, and also with the other employees. So then about the like the what's the great thing like when uh, when like having large ownership space, and like these are these are the things what we have seen happening, and uh, and the first one I think like this may be the most critical. So having like better customer experience. So. Like one story, I think like it was our second year when we got like uh, like pretty big customer from the Sweden. Uh, they have roughly 70 locations, and they took our service for all locations, and they still are our customer. And uh, and like uh, during that time, we just got our service up, and it wasn't like too stable yet. So we had like issues with uh, with like few customers, and also with these Swedish customers, we noticed after one month that actually like we lost connection. To all of those terminals, what we are having out there, so I was like, "Oh no!" Like our biggest customer, they have issue with our service, and uh, so what will happen now? And uh, like we have, yeah, the data is something like where we are focusing most. So most of the people are focusing on the data, but we have one guy who is also focusing on the hardware part and making sure that it works. So that person came to me and told that, "Hey, like we have this issue, and I'm going to take my car and I'm going to drive to Sweden." And fix those terminals in every single location, in, in those 70 locations, and that's something what happened. And I was like, wow, that, that's that's amazing. Like, uh, if that person wouldn't have the sales of the company, like, would he have done that? I don't think so. So I think like that's that's one like uh, that's like one great benefit. Uh, then like happier employees, of course, like when. Uh, when like your basically almost your whole team is uh, are the shareholders, so it's kind of like it's kind of like common thing that hey, let's make sure that we we also we kind of like we make money, but we also have, have uh, fun here. So so and uh, and with the bigger group big group of owners, it's easier to tell people that hey, like happy employees. It's like like all of us can contribute on that. It's not only like let's say like HR people. So if I'm not happy, I go to HR person that hey, can you can you do something? I'm not happy now. Uh, it's like all of all of us are responsible for that, and that's easier when you have a lot of many shareholders. Change management is easier. So, um, so of course, like like the owners, they like uh, like they uh, like to. It's it's like critical to get company running, and during the first years, that's the kind of like journey. What uh, what like like all startup startups are going on. That hey, how we make this works, and and. And we all know that you have to do use like a lot of changes to make things happen. And when you have like a lot of shareholders, doing the changes is actually like way easier because always the changes about how we get this actually work. Uh, faster problem solving. Uh, this is something what we have seen, and I think like this is this is basically because uh, people are just like spending more time and they are like thinking more, not only like between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. about like how. How we could solve these issues. So it's also like people are like like sending Slack messages during the like evening hours or during the weekend. That, hey, like we have this issue, and now I maybe got like great idea that how we could solve this. And and those people are of course sharing those ideas with other people. So that's that's I, I think like that's that's definitely helping helping uh, companies and ha and has been helping us. 
And also, like a lot more ideas about how a company could perform better. So this basically relates to this previous topic. So uh, when we like, uh, like we have of course like certain goals, certain like yearly goals, certain like long-term goals. So people are thinking about those targets and thinking about like how we can get there. So uh, so like, and and having this kind of like open environment where it's not only about the owner, but it's it's about everyone. Uh, like company is getting much more great ideas about how to make this successful. Then the next thing, so uh, so usually like uh, like yeah maybe there are startups and success stories where people haven't been working a lot, but at least in our case that, that's not the case. So it's like creating the success story. It also means that like you, you have to do quite a lot of stuff, actually like a lot of stuff, and uh, to make things successful, uh, like sometimes it means like really long days, and and it can be like. Uh, during the first years, it also meant that like sometimes working like Saturdays, sometimes working Sundays, that was something what we were doing to make to make that uh, success happen. Uh, better quality, I think like this is related to like like when you are when you are building house for yourself, uh, you you maybe focus more on the quality, but if you are if you are like just building houses for other people, then 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 the quality is not maybe like so like top high priority. So uh, that, that's kind of like one great thing what we have seen when having large owner, ownership base. And uh, the last one, flexible cost structure. And that's something like, um, that, that's great thing. Like when, uh, let's say that you have like, uh, actually like maybe like story about the previous company, not like happy or not, we were in a gaming business before. So, um, so we had roughly 40 employees. And, uh, and and we we had the situation where we had only 600 euros on our bank account, so the cost level was like like here, and we had like <laughs> very little money left, and uh, we knew that we we are going to this is going to be situation will be like much better, but it's not going to be in the following days or following two weeks. It's going to be better in about one month, two month, and uh, and like what we did basically with the with the same like large ownership structure is that like we. We um, like we like we were discussing together with uh, with the owners, and we had we had like like I was I was telling them, hey, like this is the situation what we are having, and this is now like like really tricky. But like one option what we could do is that uh, instead of paying salaries this month, we pay those salaries uh, after two months. And how does that sound? And I was like I, I didn't not I didn't know of course like what's the risk response will be. But the people were like, of course, like if that's something what we have to do, uh, of course we do that to save the company, and that's what we did, and uh, the situation was fixed. And actually, like, uh, like from that like really scary situation, after one year, uh, we sold company with like uh, many, many, many millions. So, I think that was all. Uh, I hope you learned something new about how to, how to share equity and what kind of benefits it can be. And uh, I hope you have had a great, great time here at a great SLUS event. Thank you.